Welcome to your Science Open Forum. Today we speak about uh, ARDIS project, I support sustainability, and uh, in particular, the exchange of best practices about how to live in a more sustainable way. We had um, improved this uh, project in uh, the Agency for the Right to Study, ARDIS, the regional agency of uh, Free Uli Venezia Giulia region for the right to study. I, I was, I, I'm the former director of this agency. I wanted to share with you the greetings from uh, Pierpaolo Olla, which is uh, the new director, and uh, he is implementing, uh, still implementing this important project. I like to present you my the panelists. And uh, first of all, um, uh, Angela Daniela La Rosa. She is a professor at the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. But uh, today also she represents uh, the company All Green from uh, Romani, and uh, we would like to share with her the links between uh, culture, sustainability culture and uh, um, economy, circular economy. And then uh, I, will pre I present you Stelio Vacca, the director of our regional agency for the environmental protection. Good morning, Stelio. And, and Luigino Filice, in, who is the president of the, the National Association of the Agency for the Right to Study. Um, good morning, Luigino. Good morning to everybody. <laughs> um, so I think that we will start with my, with my speech and then in the same order, the other panelists. And after that, we are we are here for your questions uh, to answer to every every answer. So let me share my. So today we, uh, I would like to, to show you what we did uh, and we are still doing in this project, I support sustainability. And after that, we will, we will speak uh, of what, what are, the, are the possible impacts of a project when we speak about it in a more wide context. We, uh, we think that the I support sustainability project is a bottom up local project. And it deals, uh, you will see, with our suppliers, with the company that supplies services and, uh, and for us. But uh, it, this is important because uh, it's, it's very strictly linked with the sustainability, innovation, and competitiveness of the companies. And this will be the point of view of Angela Daniela La Rosa. But the same uh, um, connection we found it with this regional strategy, regional sustainability strategy. And because we worked also with our agency and with Stelio Vata, that is a project manager of the regional sustainability strategy. And after that, uh, we, will, we will speak about what the, what the connection is uh, with the, the national level. So we we had uh, we are improving a, um, a regional local project, but if uh, all the agency for the right to study have a similar project, we really can have a, an, an important impact on environment. Let me let me say just a few words about Ardis. Ardis is the regional agency for the right to higher education, uh, an entity established by the autonomous region of Friuli Venezia Giulia. Our mission is uh, to organize and manage an integrated system of services and intervention for capable and deserving students to overcome the lack of financial resources essential for achieving the highest level of education. And this is in accordance with Article 34 of uh, the Italian Constitution. So the students' education and well-being are the core of our work. 
What we do uh, is to, we assign benefits to competitive uh, examinations, for example, scholarships uh, and accommodation places, accommodation contributions. And in this case, benefits are based on merit, income and assets requirements. But we also serve the whole community of students, higher students of our region. And so we have also services that are, are for all the community, for example, psychological counseling, guidance, services for students with disabilities, and services of healthcare. And what here is very important also, we, we run the university cafeteria service, and uh, we, we, also, um, improve, we, we also implement cultural activities. Um, let me let me shift to this and then the other one. I can, we'll go back. So how did this project start? It was a bottom-up process. The students contacted the, me, the agency, and they were asking for sustainability actions. So the students were complying, for example, for the problem that we had with some um, some uh, um, cafeteria that were still uh, giving uh, plastic bottles with water. And, uh, and they are, were asking me to, to be very, to, to, to ask for being very aware about topics uh, uh, linked to sustainability. Another problem they were, they were asking us to solve was the fact that not all the students living in our student houses were um, aware of the importance to, um, to, to separate waste. And there were students that really were really worried about this because they were saying it's not possible that we are not all aware of the, the importance of our daily actions uh, on, and their impact on the environment. And so we, we realized that, that the students interested by our service are up to 32,000. And we have 6,000 students taking advantage of our economic benefits. And moreover, we realized that we have, we host a community of about 1,000 students that they live in our student house. So this is a small town. In our region, we have uh, muni municipalities that have a low number of a lower number of uh, citizens, and so we realized that the action taken by the agency may have a tangible and remarkable effect on environment. But moreover, what we 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 spoke about in these days with um, Director Ola. It's important to focus on the cultural impact and that we can have because all this wide community of students then can spread the sustainability culture in their lives in other parts of the world because we are speaking about an international community of students. So this project, um, we, we thought that this project could be our answer to the UN Universal Call to fulfill the sustainable development goals defined in the Agenda 2030. Uh, and we want to, to give our, our help to this locally and personally, because we think that if we engage locally and, and personally, then we really can have an impact. So uh, we decided to draft uh, this project together with the students that were asking for this. The starting point was to acknowledge the needs within the regional student community. And this was the bottom-up project, that the bottom-up process that we started. And we, we decided to constitute three working groups made up with, of the students, representatives, artists, officials, supplying companies, local authorities, and companies operating in the environmental sector, uh, in particular waste treatment. We decided three focus teams uh, based on the request of the students, water saving, separate collection of waste, recycling, reuse, and resource saving, and sustainability cultures. So the spreads of virtuous behavior patterns in the students' community. 
Um, we we shared two fundamental rules in this work. So the first one was never to speak with slogans. So we decided to um, go will go that deep inside the, the, the issues, the problems, and decide actions uh, seriously and studying uh, the, the problems because we know that in this uh, in, in this uh, in this contest, uh, very frequently people have uh, sh choose uh, ideas without uh, a scientific uh, um, deep uh, choice. And the other, the other idea we, we shared was never to work alone. We decided that all our actions would have been carried out with local uh, authorities, companies, uh, universities, uh, and with the, the local agency for the environment protection. So we decided uh, not to work alone, but to try to, to cover um, to, to really establish a net of common interest in this project. So on, on the 10th of April, 2019, um, I support sustainability project was presented to the various stakeholders during a national conference held in Gorizia and promoted by Andizu, the National Association of Institution for the Right to Higher Education, uh, whose uh, president is, is today with us, Luigino. And we, we really shared in that occasion the importance of this project with all the other regional agencies. What, what were the actions we decided to, to implement? Uh, the, the first working table, Water save, Saving, decided to raise awareness about water scarcity and promote sustainable man management of water. We have the project of installation of staplers of free water in partnership with water supplies companies and the university. You can see an example of this project to, in these days if you are um, in, uh, in the Euroscience Open Forum uh, in presence, I see, because uh, the, um, the water supply company is, uh, is showing a project of this kind inside uh, the Porto Vecchio um, venue of, uh, of your science conference and we are very happy that we, we can see this project spreading in our city. Um, the sec other actions was uh, what we um, decided to, to put water in jugs in the university cafeteria and in the partner restaurants. In the university cafeteria it was already done but the problem was in the restaurants that have a partnership with us and provide uh, lunches and dinners for students. So we, we made them aware that this is a problem. And so to, not to use plastic bottles, but use water, put water in, in jars. And um, we also distributed metal water bottles to all students living in the university residence in order to reduce uh, the use of plastic bottles. We made the agreements, and so this was the main actions in the first um, in the first working group. The second working group is about separate collection of waste, recycling, reuse, and resource saving. And we had the agreements with global services suppliers to reduce energy waste, pollutant detergents, and etc. All students' rooms were equipped with a green detergent with green detergents and bins for separate collection of waste. It was an important bu uh, budget allocation, um, as you see. But for us, it was important to to really to vehicle awareness about your personal daily um, commitment with this uh, these themes. We progressively substituted the board slides with LEDs. And we can enhance uh, waste separation in the students' residence in collaboration with the municipal municipalities, utilities, companies. We um, we also provided free use, free to use iPad to read digital newspapers in order to avoid forest exploitation and also to um, and also to spread uh, environmental culture because we chose some magazines, spe specific uh, magazine that can uh, also spread this um, culture. And, and we have also with uh, the companies that run the university cafeteria, we have a project for the donation of unneaten food. 
The third and very important working table is promotion of sustainability culture. And we, we, we are still implementing a lot of actions in this, but uh, this year we participated to Milumino di Meno initiative, which is about energy saving. And this year was also linked to um, the, the, the topic to, of uh, stopping exploitation of forests. So we, um, we agreed to this uh, goal and we planted a tree in the garden of a student's residence in Trieste with this message. In this uh, working table, we also visited uh, the firms, uh, the local firms for plastic and, wa and waste treatment. And this was, uh, this is uh, our visit in a, in a company specialized in plastic and waste treatment. So we could really touch with our hands uh, where all the problems uh, had finally arrive and how, how much we have to work after if we don't separate before um, waste and how this is really uh, becoming a serious problem also with, uh, for, the, for the communities and uh, all, um, all the energy and also all the budget that we, we need to, to use for this. We have an, an ongoing promotion of a careful use of heating and cooling systems inside the, the um, student house. And we also had an event for students about zero mile products with a chef expert on food sustainability, which, who is Roberto Franzi. And he also has a company and, and, and he produces food with, um, with the waste of, of other of other agricultural process. And now we are projecting a virtual stations for shared electric kicked scooters in our residences in, uh, in Trieste and uh, Udine. So um, I, I am going to, to, to end my, my speech, reminding that I support sustainability is a never ending project. Uh, today, I, I shared with you the action that we we implemented and we are still implementing, but we want uh, it not to be a single spot initiative, but uh, a never ending project. Many things still remain to, to be done. And in defining them, it, it's really important the involvement of the students, but also of the stakeholders. And this is the reason why it's really a pleasure for me today to share this um, this floor with Stelio Vatta and Regino Filice that they gave to the project uh, stimulating of the contact with the national level and the regional level. The, the last uh, thing I want to, to tell to you, we had um, uh, a project inside uh, this staff. We were engaged uh, thanks to uh, this uh, Foxwing Company, which is a, a, a innovative startup uh, in Udine. Um, all this staff was engaged in a generating, generating idea, ideas uh, project about sustainability. And we had uh, 73 co-workers and 10 students representative involved. We had 31 projects submitted. We, we chose the six top ideas and three winning projects. And those projects were about planting trees in our these common areas, installing charging points for e-bike and e-cars, smoke awareness campaign about cigarettes, about uh, recycling, digital first, promoting the sole usage of digital forms in our, all our administrative activities, Recycling game, uh, collecting points for cleanness, tidiness, and for the best waste separation among the different students' uh, residences. And info, infographics, so posters and billboards about responsible behavior and good practices. What was very important is that Foxwind, this company, never had such a similar response to their um, their collection of ideas in other private companies. We had about 50% of our colleagues that shared ideas in sustainability. So this is very, very important for us to remark that the public administration is here and is uh, can do something for, for environment together with stakeholders and uh, users. 
Uh, I want to share with you another last information. COVID the emergency had a big impact on the management of our students' residence in this month. Director Ola had really to face a lot of problems, as you can imagine. Aldis was the sole organization open in the hospita in hospitality sector in our region for the reason that we had the international students that were not, uh, they couldn't go back home. And uh, health has been our, is still our priority. And we had no, no, student with uh, positive uh, for coronavirus. So all, all the, the rules that we applied were, were, were really strong and, and good for this. And we think that we need to, to, to make a reflection about uh, the fact that environmental protection projects slowed down a bit in the interest of social and economic sustainability. Because, you know, in these in this days, we are still using a lot of... Uh, of um, uh, packaging uh, and we are back using uh, a bit more uh, also water in, uh, in plastic bottles. So now that we are coming back to a, a new normal way of life, uh, we should uh, once more come back to our project. So the conclusion is uh, what can we learn from, from our experience and adapt it to other organization and how can we do more? So thank you. And I, I give the floor to, to Angela Daniela for to trying to, to tr draw a connection with the companies and circular economy. Thank you, Olivia. Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Daniela La Rosa, and uh, I'm, today I'm going to talk about a, a very a current topic in, um, for industries in uh, the field of uh, sustainable development, which is the uh, concept of industrial symbiosis. Um, it is um, um, uh, the, there is a very um, a strong attempt among companies to uh, move towards uh, more sustainable uh, production. And um, um, in, in fact, there is a, it is a reality already uh, that in many countries uh, have been established uh, eco-industrial parks, which means that, that there are geographical uh, regions where the companies have decided to settle together in order to share uh, facilities and utilities. But um, this concept could be um, enlarged, enlarged further uh, with um, the introduction of the industrial symbiosis. What, it's very simple. The meaning is very simple. Uh, basically, uh, what the companies want to do is to put together into an industrial park um, uh, uh, companies that can uh, uh, be, uh, they, they can um, uh, exchange the bioproducts um, between them. Uh, what does it mean? If you see in this uh, diagram, company B um, creates 
product, but also byproducts like it is flow two and flow four could be waste, for instance. What is waste for a company can become uh, raw material for uh, another company. And this is quite important because it's a way to um, reduce the production of waste and transform and treat them, them locally. So um, this is, and um, this, uh, Basically, it's called the industrial symbiosis. It's um, uh, there are some examples of um, um, industrial parks with industrial symbiosis already existing in Denmark, uh, and um, the, the idea is to promote um, the um, transition from a cradle to grave approach, which means um, production uh, from, uh, which means uh, an approach uh, starting from material extraction, uh, manufacture, uh, use, and production of waste to a cradle to cradle approach. Basically, the production system should uh, not produce waste at all. Cradle to cradle means to be able to um, produce waste, but then this waste should enter again like nutrient for another system uh, for another company so if this um, circle is uh, created uh, within an industrial park uh, this means to create uh, industrial symbiosis and this occurs with uh, um, economic saving and uh, first of all uh, environmental uh, um, impact reduction and I, I want to talk about um, a practical example uh, that is uh, um, an industrial uh, park that is going to be built in Norway. In, in, uh, uh, in this picture is reported the um, geographic region, then uh, or this area representation of the geographic region of a Shelburne uh, industrial area in, Nor in Norway. Um, the city, uh, the municipality of this region is called Jovik, where I actually live, um, is uh, promoting the creation of an industrial park with industrial symbiosis, uh, trying to create a network between the ecosystem, and that, you, that is the forest, you can see in the picture, the green area, uh, well, the, 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 the presence of forest in Norway, it's uh, huge. So here it's really um, a good um, uh, raw material. Uh, wood is a very uh, common raw material. But uh, so to integrate the forest with the town, with the, uh, with the city and the industry um, uh, within uh, the same geographical area, this is the, the, the first step to create an eco-industrial park with uh, the industrial symbiosis concept. Um, how, how can this um, industrial symbiosis uh, concept be achieved, basically? This is in this diagram. Um, it, this diagram is an idea and just a model of how uh, the industrial symbiosis could be created to link together the city, which is the so, represent the society, the industry that represents the economy, and the um, forest that represents the environment, which are the three main uh, elements to put together in order to move towards a sustainable development. So basically from the forest, from the environment, uh, it is possible to get raw materials, uh, wood, cellulose, and biomass. They are already very well exploited and used. And then um, uh, the companies that use this, uh, the wood, the Hanton is the biggest uh, company in Norway that produces uh, panels uh, of wood. Uh, so, and, and this is already existing, this reality. The idea is to increase this industrial park, uh, putting uh, um, other companies, uh, but the companies should be selected in a way to create the industrial symbiosis. So the um, one idea is to uh, um, introduce a company that produces uh, plastic, bioplastic, because uh, plastic is necessary for packaging. Also for wood products, it's important then to have a packaging. So, um, and then the, the, the products of these uh, companies could be used by other companies like um, producer of furniture and wood or producer of construction material. 
Um, so this is and um, this is from the point of view of the industrial park. Uh, these companies uh, already produce a big amount of heat uh, during their uh, processes, and the heat is not uh, well used. It's actually released in the atmosphere, and this means creating pollution and wasting resource. So one idea is to collect the heat and deliver to the company called the Edsiva, that is the producer of electricity, the local. Uh, the national producer of electricity. Uh, so this could be this connection could be a, a way to create industrial symbiosis, which means to exchange byproducts. Uh, and the electricity then is delivered to the city and to the industry. So here you can see the diagram, the residential job is the, the city, the town. It's not a city, it's a town with uh, 30,000 inhabitants. And then from the point of view of the town, the town is a, a producer of wastes. So in this model, I accounted only them waste management from urban solid waste. It, um, it, that the, we will, we, uh, I mean, the, the management, the correct management is uh, to separate the waste. But wastes are flow of uh, resources also. In fact, from uh, plastic waste, it's possible to um, recycle uh, using a recycle plant that will be part of the industrial um, uh, part, uh, uh, using the recycling plant that will be part of the industrial part, uh, the waste plastic will be recycled and so um, new product can uh, be produced for the economy from the market. Or using the um, uh, wood waste from the wood industry, uh, so th this wood waste could be uh, transformed, could become actually a biomass for heat. And uh, so this can be connected uh, again. This flow can be connected with the um, uh, SIVA process to produce electricity. But another interesting idea is to um, build an, uh, an aerobic digestion that is not uh, digestor, that is not. Um, uh, um, they, they are not common in Norway, uh, so it is an idea to um, provide uh, these facilities for uh, the uh, treatment of waste food. Uh, waste food is already collected by the, um, uh, restaurants or uh, agricultural practice, uh, but a good uh, way to treat these waste is through an anaerobic digester and to produce uh, biogas. Uh, biogas is a mixture of uh, methane and CO2. And this uh, uh, mixed uh, biogas uh, could be used to run uh, bus, like um, a urban bus, to, as a transport for uh, the community of uh, Yobik and the industry. So this will create uh, also a, a circle. So this is an example of, of an industrial symbiosis, but that includes also the city. Uh, and um, so uh, what are the benefits of the industrial symbiosis? And here in this um, uh, table, I uh, put the, um, well, the main uh, uh, aspect in the example that I showed before, there are um, some um, aspects that uh, where, where the industrial symbiosis can be uh, created. And so what changes with and without industrial symbiosis? For instance, with the heat, um, uh, uh, the situation, how it is now, heat is uh, released in the atmosphere. So without industrial symbiosis, this creates pollution and waste of resources. But with the inclusion of industrial symbiosis, which means um, bringing the heat to uh, the, the company, Siva to produce electricity, this, uh, this means uh, with industrial symbiosis, uh, the, um, there is a benefit in terms of resource recovery and uh, uh, avoided pollution. So the same concept can be applied to the biomass. The um, biomass produced as a waste from uh, uh, restaurants, from forests, from uh, agro 
uh, uh, agricultural agroindustrial uh, practice. So in this uh, waste should be need, required to be treated anyway. So if they have to be delivered in a specific treatment plant, uh, um, the, the company that have, have to do this, they have to pay uh, for that service. But if um, this biomass can be treated uh, directly into the uh, industrial park with special agreement, this uh, money could be saved. So uh, the, uh, activating the industrial symbiosis here, the benefit of having industrial symbiosis is also here to have money uh, saving and uh, um, uh, once again uh, environmental uh, pollution reduction because in this case the um, transport of the waste will be avoided from um, one this side to another side. And the same concept for the plastic in the sample of the plastic. Um, also, um, all the type of waste, if they are treated in loco, they will uh, um, reduce the environmental impact and will reduce money. And uh, about infrastructure sharing, uh, this is also the utility of the um, industrial park and with the industrial uh, symbiosis, this, uh, uh, this uh, will happen. Uh, and infrastructure sharing means uh, to share the same uh, um, uh, waste management for solid and liquid uh, wastes, or uh, to, for instance, to share the facilities to train the employees. Um, or to share, sharing the um, emergency uh, services, uh, transport, etc. This um, all, all these facilities um, reduce the environmental impacts and, uh, of course, uh, reduce the economic cost. So all this uh, concept of um, uh, industrial symbiosis that is uh, very welcome from the companies. And it's a part of the, the concept of the circular economy and that is quite uh, current now. Um, so the, the, what is a, a circular economy in very, in, in short, is a way to uh, contrast the traditional linear economy, as you can see here in this diagram. Uh, our economy has been based on the concept of uh, take, make, use, dispose, and dispose means create pollution because of the waste. So this linear uh, flow uh, should be changed. And in fact, um, uh, moving from make, use, and instead, instead then, uh, disposed, um, consider the reuse, uh, reuse, remake, recycle. In fact, at the beginning, the concept of circular economy was called like the three R concept uh, because uh, I mean, the concept was to introduce the uh, reuse, remake and recycle in, uh, in the economical cycle. And uh, so if we consider, if we, Think about what I was talking before about the um, uh, industrial symbiosis. Basically, industrial symbiosis process wants to do exactly what is uh, uh, recommended by the circular economy to avoid waste but uh, promote the uh, recycle and uh, reuse, or remanufacturing, and um, uh, make. Uh, and, and in order to um, uh, minimize the use of resources, because we are living in time of scarcity, of resource scarcity, and uh, uh, to avoid the creation of waste, pollution, and emissions. Too. And uh, these are very well known concepts in, um, in, uh, in the field of uh, sustainable development. And uh, in fact, we can say that this, all these concepts of uh, uh, industrial symbiosis, circular economy, they are a way to reach, to achieve the sustainable development goals. And in fact, the circular economy um, uh, is, um, can, can be linked very well with the very specific uh, circular um, uh, sustainable development goals in special number six on the cleaner water. Uh, because you know, the achieving the circular or moving towards the circular economy uh, means also to uh, go um, to reach the level of these goals 
the required level for these goals on clean water, on clean energy, on economic growth, on um, sustainable cities, on sustainable consumption and production, on climate change, on ocean, on uh, life on land, especially, especially for these. And, and then at the end, in conclusion, um, I want to say that um, the uh, well, the conclusion of uh, this presentation is that uh, uh, industries and cities should create a symbiotic network with uh, ecosystems in order to promote a circular economy to achieve the sustainable development goals. And it is uh, has been um, uh, um, told by a long time now because the concept of sustainable development was born in the 80s and we are still uh, on uh, the, the process to reach the goals. So we, uh, we have still a uh, lot to do for this. Thank you for uh, your attention and uh, speak. Yeah. Thank you, Daniela. It was very interesting for us to see this experience where cities and companies and industrial areas are linked together to, to have a project of a circular economy. Very, very interesting. Now I give the floor to Stelio Vanda, director of our regional agency for the environmental protection and the project manager of the regional sustainability strategy. Thanks, Lydia. Well, good morning, everybody. My name is uh, Stelio Watta, and I'm the general manager of the Environmental Protection Agency of the Friuli Venezia Giulia region. But today, I am here as a coordinator for the regional strategy for sustainable development, a great challenge that we are all carrying out uh, together. And today, I will briefly show you how. Well, let's remember the origins of sustainable development. 1987, Brundtland Report, World uh, work on Environment and World Commission on Environment Development, Economic Growth, Environment Protection, Social Equality and uh, Equity. In uh, 2015, the United Nations, the United Nations Assembly approved the 2030 Agenda. The 2030 agenda includes uh, uh, five eras, the famous uh, five P, people, planet, prosperity, peace, uh, and uh, partnership. 17 uh, uh, sustainable development goals, 169 targets, and uh, 248 indicators uh, to today. The, the path that we are talking is to move from Agenda 2030 to the National Strategy for Sustainable Development in the, to the regional one. The 
then uh, we um, uh, then we, we we see the step of national st strategy uh, mapping positioning of Italy definition of the reference context identification of national strengths and weakness definition of strategic national goals organized around the areas 5P of the 2030 agenda, multi-level and consultation of stakeholders. Um, The, the, this uh, led to to identification of uh, five areas, same as uh, 2030 agenda. 22 national strategic choice, uh, 52 national strategic goals, and uh, five uh, uh, vectors, transversal items. Um, we remind uh, you that uh, ISTAT is the structure that monitors the results achieved. Implementation, monitoring and review involve uh, update uh, indicators, consultation through the Forum for Sustainable Development, to do our regional sustainable development uh, strategy. And uh, I remember uh, our slogan is uh, let's plan the regional strategy together. An agreement was uh, signed with the Ministry of the Environment to technically and financially support the region FVG in drawing the regional strategy involving the University of uh, Trieste, Udine, the Energy Agency of Friuli Venezia Giulia, and the Regional Agency for Environmental Protection. Where we are? Some actions have been completed. Construction of governance and institutional direction cabin. Establishing an interdirectional working group between a region and agency for energy, University of Trieste, University of Udine, and agency, regional agency for protection. Other ones are in progress, uh, involving stakeholders in the process, preparing of the positioning of FUG with respect to the 2030 agenda, mapping the regional action plans with respect to the, uh, to the goals, and uh, to do elaboration of the regional sustainable development strategy with the definition of the regional goals, the indicators and the monitoring and review system, the freelancing lines. In particular, for involving stakeholders in the process, we, 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 we think free webinar, education, tourism, mono use plastics. Online questionnaires submitted to civil society, more than 4,000 completed up today. Guided questionnaires submitted to local public administrations. Online questionnaires submitted to trade community through sector, uh, sector association. And uh, uh, let me, in this process, uh, remember the, um, uh, it is important to underline the contribution of artists. Uh, we are their slogan, I support uh, sustainability. Uh, there are more um, 
30,000 students potentially involved, university professors, and this officials, supplying companies, local authorities, uh, generating ideas, uh, focus team, weather, uh, weather saving, waste uh, and resource saving, sustainable culture. Now we are working on the positioning of uh, FUG. Um, it, it is a starting point on which to build the regional strategy. You can see the excellent uh, result of our region compared to goal uh, four. The, um, in progress, uh, um, mapping uh, the regional direction action plans with respect to uh, the goals survey to each regional direction with the forms uh, to fill out and meetings to build up the region vision. The steps uh, we are following are then positioning, goals, indicators, strategy, monitoring, and, uh, and uh, review. Our uh, challenge is uh, to create an integrated policy framework for sustainable development. For further information, visit the indicators uh, sites. Thanks. Thank you, Stelio. It was very interesting uh, to have an update uh, on this process. And I, I think that it's a really huge number, 4,000 questionnaires uh, up today. So it really means that our regional community is uh, aware of the importance of this uh, strategy. So thank you for giving us the idea that our project is inside this process. I, I now give the floor to Luigino Filic, and as I said, the president of the National Agency of the Agency uh, for the Right to Study Higher Education. Good morning, everybody, or as we say usually in Italy, buongiorno. I would like to thank uh, firstly uh, Lydia Alessio Verni for this invitation, very nice uh, conference today. Uh, as she said, I am the president of Andisu, and this is the Italian Association of Rights Study Organization. Uh, we bring together uh, the main part of the organization on the territories because uh, for the Italian constitution, the, the right of study, right to study is a, a regional affair. So I just uh, uh, give you some information about what, uh, what what's are, because we group together, as you can see, all the regional uh, association. We supply uh, yearly about uh, 150,000 scholarships. We, we serve about 17 million meals, and we host about 36 uh, thousand students in our dormitories. So it's a very big organization because it's the sum of the local organizations. We were founded in 1997, so we have more than 20 years. And uh, the total number of employees that we can uh, take together is about uh, uh, 15,000, 1,500, sorry. And uh, take into account that the, the global amount of money that we move is about uh, uh, 600 million euros per year. So 
Today, uh, we said some, uh, some uh, um, uh, uh, presentation before mine. The first was by Lydia, in which I just selected the term culture because probably uh, sustainability is firstly a, a, a matter of culture because we have to really understand what is. I um, underline the words uh, given by Angela symbiotic and reused because are two of the pillars on which uh, we can found our policy, our strategy in the future. And uh, finally, Stelio talked about the strategy for development. So because uh, we, we have to analyze and to carry out some strategies together, but not to maintain the, the, the actual system, but to develop ourselves and our country. So I would like to add some uh, new information about a national strategy, but mainly which involve our millennials. I would like to, to excuse me, but uh, I am firstly a, a professor, so I will talk about my students sometimes because uh, I, am, uh, I, I feel to be a professor before the, the president of Andisu. So what we what we give our students in terms of services in terms of the work we do so first of all we give the students a house okay like the one that you can see in the picture which is probably not very nice because now we, we can do better we give a meal we give also a transportation system we give a space to study uh, also some money which is the the, the, the less important uh, part in my opinion but also some advanced, advanced services. Uh, in her presentation, Lydia shows a lot of new services that we can give the students today because living in a university is not the same that to, to sleep in a university. Because for instance, I, 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 I said uh, uh, counseling or other services like that that usually are not in, uh, in a normal availability for the students, but now they are really important to, to take uh, our students in, uh, in a wide mode. So I give some information about what we are moving, how we are moving at a national um, level, bringing together all the um, organization of Andisu, uh, Lydia mentioned the, the possibility to scale up some uh, local programs. Uh, we, we were present in Gorizia when the uh, I support sustainability program was launched and it was very important because the, uh, the, the, the best practice sharing is probably one of the mission of our organization. So what we do for the house of students? Well, the, 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 the two main words that we try to share with the students are energy and driving. Energy because uh, the new structure, the new building that we are going to build are probably more efficient than in the past. But it's very important how the students drive the, the dorms because some cultural levels have to be uh, shared together. I mean, uh, close the, the, the light when you leave the apartment or uh, is not uh, is not a law that you have to keep a, a tropical temperature in your dorm because uh, 18 or 19 degrees are enough to stay in uh, your wellness, uh, uh, avoiding a, a sort of uh, a very very uh, huge consumption of energy. So the new building that we are going to realize in the next year are characterized by a new design like the one you see, but also with a lot of uh, smart uh, technologies with the, that try to uh, reduce energy impact, but also to give the students new services and features. So the second probably is related to the meal. Okay, the students usually eat in the, in the universities, in our cafeterias and so on. Well, this is, in my opinion, one of the first place in which we can educate the students, not only for sustainability, but also to avoid other problems like obesity, for instance, because we now call our cafeterias uh, are becoming the restaurants in which they do experience of well and good eating, okay? Like a, a sort of uh, uh, complementary task, of course, we have also to, to look at the materials that we use. In this picture, you can see, for instance, that the fork are not uh, from plastic, but are uh, metallic and so are uh, reusable, 
as uh, uh, we, we said before in uh, the uh, uh, Angela, if I don't run the presentation, the, the dishes are in uh, compostable materials and uh, you don't see any plastic uh, part of, for instance, for um, glasses and so on, because the water is uh, given by this uh, big bottle and then the, the, the glasses are, are of course, uh, compostable as every, every uh, other stuff. So is in my opinion, and, uh, and, and these two partners agrees for that, that uh, um, uh, Mensa, as we call uh, cafeterias, are first uh, a, a place to educate people for sustainability, but also for a good eating, as I said before. Well, what else? Uh, a transportation system, okay? Because the students usually stay in a place which is not exactly in the university, but they have to move. So also transportation, mobility today is, as you know, a problem. So we try to share with them the culture of low carbon vehicles, okay? So uh, in this case, the, the um, discussion is very important because, uh, and very, very also happy because as, and funny because uh, for instance, you can see this picture, uh, the, 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 the students is riding on this very dangerous machine that today we see in our cities and we are discussing from a sustainability point of view, probably is a very nice stuff. But what about health? What about safety for our students? So I don't have a solution, but probably to discuss about mobility is just the first step that we can capitalize for the next uh, uh, actions that we are going to do together. So the, the number four is the space to study. You know, what usually uh, uh, differentiates uh, the uh, public dormitory respect to a single apartment that the students can uh, uh, loan, for instance, uh, in, uh, in a normal place of the city, is that they have the, some common spaces to study. What we are trying to do is to realize in, this spa in these spaces, uh, I well remember the tea room in uh, Trieste, uh, uh, Lydia, when we were uh, together in a, a comfortable way, when the student can stay well, okay, then they have a place to study with the technologies, uh, with the space to, 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 to put the PC, with the connection to the internet and so on. But mainly they have to be nice places because to study is nice and you can study nicely in a nice space. This is what we are trying to do all over the country in, in our next actions. Okay, and then some money. But uh, I would like to finish this, uh, my short presentation giving you two uh, sentences. The first is, uh, is one uh, given by Andrew Albert, which is a colleague from the University of Chicago. And uh, he said that the education does, doesn't have aims because uh, it is the aim of the other things. This is very important from my point of view. Uh, I was very surprised as, as uh, surprised, sorry, as Stelio, uh, looking at the SDG goals, because after poverty, after the uh, reducing of uh, uh, anger people, after the, the, the healthy, the, 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 the SDG goal, the, the goal number four was the quality of education. So if we interpret this number as a sort of priority, we see that good education, quality education is the number four on 17, is before a lot of our important stuff like uh, industry, sustainability and other stuff like that. This is very, very nice because probably the, the, the pivot is really uh, in, on the role of education in sustainability and who is professor like me and who, who works in uh, uh, all the complementary space that regards and concern the students probably has to take this one. So I would like to finish with a wish, what I wish our students. Uh, I again ask, uh, uh, to, to, sorry, because I, I, I refer to my students. Uh, what do you usually see, especially in this time in which we are probably, I, I say probably exiting by the uh, COVID time, I, I, wish the, I wish the students to think positive because uh, uh, we have to be, of course, uh, uh, optimistic because we're looking at the future. 
But uh, if we say them, think positive or think sustainable, probably is the same, okay? Because uh, uh, we can look positively at our future just thinking sustainable because we have to preserve our planet, okay? Ref respect to the next generation that we are going to care in this moment or, and also to educate in our university. So thank you very much for your attention and I am ready for your question that you have uh, answering in the, in the next minute. Then thank you so much. Thank you, Luigino. Thank you very much. And I was wondering what was the starting point when uh, two years ago, more or less, we started uh, talking about sustainability. And, and I think that we, we really, really made a lot of, uh, of projects and awareness also inside our structures, inside our agencies, uh, at the national level, at the regional level. This, uh, for me, is really really important and so uh, I don't I don't think that we have questions from uh, uh, the audience but um, si still we have a few few minutes be before closing this panel I would like to ask you uh, a, a little comment uh, having ended all our presentation and so I would ask uh, Angela just to underline if the, I, I think that um, I was wondering because today I have um, another agency and um, which is Agenzia Lavoro Sviluppo Impresa in uh, our region. And I deal with uh, companies and job. And uh, I was uh, thinking about a project uh, to put together companies and uh, uh, the Agency for the Right to Study, because uh, maybe it would be very interesting an exchange of experience with this uh, new park. Uh, so I would ask you your impression about all, uh, all, all the speeches, but also this idea. Yeah, uh, th this um, meeting today was so interesting, also enlightening for me, you know, uh, all these activities that happen uh, on the education level, from the, like uh, the last presentation was uh, about the students' lifestyle, how important it is to um, start the, um, to create an education on the sustainability from, uh, from uh, the school and the university. So it's, it's important to spread the info. And also it's important to spread this concept in uh, companies and industries because that's uh, still uh, a challenge. Uh, in uh, some areas, in some countries, uh, um, this process has started earlier, in other countries uh, later. So Italy, I think, is in between. Uh, so a big effort should be done still in uh, many countries. And uh, it's, um, it's a difficult uh, process because, um, you know, the moving towards sustainable development is not... Uh, um, it, it can occur with um, efforts from uh, everybody, from uh, the producer, the companies. They have to make an effort to um, be, uh, to accept, to have uh, the process always um, at the top, you know, optimize the process in order to reduce the uh, environmental um, impact. Uh, but this, um, once they learn that they can get benefit from uh, the, a more uh, sustainable way of thinking, uh, they can get benefits because they can save uh, consumption of resources. They can, can save, for instance, uh, consumption of 
electricity, and so they can reduce costs. So if uh, um, you know the information on the concept of sustainability, sustainability, on the, also to the um, industry level, if this can uh, give to the entrepreneur the feeling that they can get benefits from uh, um, a new approach on the production, um, this can help because nobody uh, can uh, um, make an effort without a benefit. So, but companies can have benefits also while doing an effort they can gain benefits. So it's a, li a life cycle thinking that we have to promote. So the idea to create you know, um, parks, industrial park, uh, uh, it's good because it's a way to uh, give information. It's very important. The education is the best, the, 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 first, uh, the first step. I, I don't want to <laughs> keep all the discussion. Uh, I want to leave the... Uh, speech to the other uh, people. Yeah. I, I really agree with you. And what I see speaking with companies and uh, also with students is that companies can be also more attractive for young talents and of these new, new generations from the millennial on, because mm -hmm. I think they are looking for, um, looking for working for something more than the profit of the single company. So I think that companies really, really can gain a lot of uh, advantage if they, if they think, uh, think sustainable. I, I really like this, uh, this uh, way of so, think positive, think sustainable. Yes. So Stelio, can you, can you also draw some conclusions from, uh, from all this over, over look? Okay, um, I am very happy that um, uh, the, the online questionnaire submitted to the civil society. Now uh, uh, we have uh, uh, 4,000 completed until today. It is a great, uh, great deal uh, uh, because um, uh, because uh, development strategy, regional strategies is a process from bottom to top, and, uh, and this uh, show it. And uh, the, other, uh, uh, the other thing I, I would like to remember is the seven position of our region in, uh, in the fourth goals, uh, quality education. It is very, 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 very important. It is uh, um, a, a, it is a, a challenge for the future, for the future of our son, and uh, and for this I have uh, I have I am very very happy. I I also think that it's really really a huge number because I I know the numbers of other questionnaires that we are using for other policies and really it's hard sometimes in our region to engage uh, 1000 i mean also yes. 500 uh, people uh, really really uh, answering those short questionnaires because you have to be engaged so this is really really a, a topic which is important for, for people and communities and yes. i also saw because i saw the results uh, of uh, questionnaires uh, from um, the new uh, programming period with the uh, structural funds. And uh, I saw that the, the huge number, the, the, the uh, top number of, uh, of uh, answers were for the priorities linked with the sustainable development. So it's really, really clear that also community of citizens are, are looking for this. So, Luigi, I would ask you to draw the conclusions uh, for, from your point of view. And I'm really, really uh, saying you thank you for, for your uh, presentation. I have uh, um, a couple of suggestions uh, or suggestions that we can uh, eventually share. Uh, just looking at my experience in education system, if, uh, if you want. I just... Uh, try to provocate you about two, two different arguments. The first 
is very simple to understand because also Angela Bazzelio and you said something uh, uh, respect to the possibility to integrate the policies because uh, uh, sustainability is not a matter of uh, uh, education or industries or uh, government. Uh, sustainability is a common, is a transversal question that we have to, to solve together. So the government have to give, uh, has to give the, the policy, the university has to educate the people together to the school, the industries have to change mentality, and I will say how. And uh, in my opinion, it's uh, like, uh, I don't know, uh, if you go, it's, a, it's an invitation in the Vatican Museum, you can uh, uh, probably uh, remain estaciated if you look at the, the School of Atene of Raffaello. But uh, uh, what is very nice in this picture is not uh, just uh, because Raffaello was very clever and very nice to, uh, to paint the, the people, but to put together the world at that time, the philosopher, the scientist, uh, all the people together. This uh, harmonic collection is probably the trick for which this uh, paint was very, very, in my opinion, one of the best in the world. It's not because Raffaello was very, very, very nice. This is true, but it's not the only reason. So sustainability is a common problem, okay? If we look at sustainability from different points of view, but in the same direction, probably we can solve something. Otherwise, we can uh, animate a lot of conferences, but no more than this. But what, uh, what is changed, this is my provocation, is that uh, up to some years ago, sustainability was uh, um, uh, fe felt like a cost. I explain. Uh, we, we, we studied the sustainability at university and uh, we well remember probably the, 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 the picture in which we have three different balls. The first is uh, the ancient, let me say, uh, economic sustainability. Do, do we have money to do something or not? The second one was the environment, but today we have also the social responsibility from the people, from the consumers, from the producers, and so on. So what I observe is that uh, up to uh, before the millennials, sustainability was a cost because if you pass from the plastic bottle to the glass bottle, or if you avoid to use the plastic and you use the, the bottle that you, you, give me, you gave me at, uh, in, in Gorizia, the, um, the borraccia, I don't know what is the, the, the name in, uh, in, uh, in English, but the, the uh, reusable bottle, uh, at that time, it was a cost, okay? Because it's uh, less uh, easy to use, uh, you have to wash uh, the, the, the bottle every time, uh, you have to pay attention because it's heavy and so on. But if you ask the millennials to use the plastic, they refuse that because uh, in uh, their culture, something is changing, okay? So for our generation, sustainability is a cost. For them, is today more or less uh, normality. This is very important. This is what I see that is changing in the world, okay? Because for my, uh, I have two daughters, as you know, they are millennials. Uh, the, uh, some behaviors for them are very, very normal, okay? What I have to think to change something for them is normal. Because for instance, uh, uh, I say, I, I looked at the, the, the program that you carried out, uh, uh, the digital first, is, if I don't run, okay? Uh, well, in my generation, we usually uh, use uh, the paper to, to draw some uh, notes and so on. For them is uh, uh, impossible to do. Uh, they are paperless by definition because if you say my my wife, okay, you have to do shopping, so please uh, buy the the milk and the water. Usually, we what we do, we take a, pay, a, a, a piece of paper and we sign with a pen. If you ask the same stuff to my daughters, they use the telephone, okay, because it's easier for them to avoid any paper consumption. So these behaviors together to other ones probably are the right way to change the world. Because what said before Stelio, I repeat, is very important because we don't have to look at the future with what we call in Italy the crescita felice, the happy downgrading. 
we have to look at the future trying to increase, to improve our services, our wellness, our happiness. But to improve our services, our happiness, does not mean immediately that we have to use some more resources from the earth, okay? So sci scientists like uh, me, like other people that work in manufacturing uh, technologies probably have to work about that. But the same is from the policy, the same is, is for the education system. Look at the future, doing more, but the consumption less, which is probably is another way to translate sustainability. Do more with less. This is what we have to do any, any day, okay, with uh, any, um, people with which we, we, we speak, no? with our government, uh, with our professors, with our, our child and so on. This is what, what I think. I don't know if this provocation is what, what you think or I am crazy looking at the world in this way. Well, personally, I think you really sent, sent to the, the problem. First, uh, we, we should look at sustainability not only from the environmental uh, point of view. It's very important to remember that there is a social and an economic sustainability. And I, and second thing, I am really I really agree with you. And the young, the new generation are much more aware, and they are already li living in in a sustainable way or trying to live in a sustainable way in a world that is not uh, is is really far far from being sustainable. But uh, our effort, uh, I think that the effort from the public uh, should be uh, to understand to to listen to this. And what we tried to do with this project was to try to, to listen to this, uh, this, um, this way of life coming from students. So I think that university has uh, um, the function to educate, but nowadays I think, and this is my provocation, it really has the duty to listen because sometimes society, young society, young people are, um really are, are already are more um, responsible uh, in comparison with uh, the, this, the university itself. So sometimes I, I, I still founded uh, plastic bottles in uh, the university cafeterias, not the one we, we were managing because we, we have to be really coherent. When we say something, we teach something, we, we have also to do it. We have to be con more concrete. And so I think your, your provocation was really, really right, centered. And, um, and what about uh, integrating policies? I think that uh, Angela, really uh, in your experience in this uh, symbiotic uh, park, is something that is trying to integrate uh, yeah. integrate policies. But what I, I think is, are we able to do it? Uh, are we able to scale it up in Italy at uh, a policy level? I think is this what Stelio is trying to do with uh, his um, strategy. So Angela and Stelio, if you if you still want to, to say something about what our uh, yeah. About what uh, Regina gave us as a suggestion. Um, yes. Yeah, I can uh, say something about this um, uh, experience on industrial symbiosis, but uh, it, it is a new concept, and some example uh, examples already exist. Um, I am not sure in Italy, but uh, for sure in Denmark there is uh, an eco industrial park with. Uh, industrial symbiosis and uh, I'm living in Norway so I'm more aware of the policies in Norway not about the policies in uh, Italy why not I think that uh, Italy is very advanced for uh, many aspects and uh, it can also be created uh, quite easily in Italy I am always very optimistic when uh, I talk about Italy I don't know if it's because I live abroad and uh, <laughs> Italy is a uh, my country. So, and uh, anyway, the resources of Italy in, in 
uh, every aspect are really huge, also in uh, as human uh, resources are very big. As it is possible, uh, and but it is um, an ex experiment for industries because you know it is important to create new agreement because, uh, like for example. Eh? Uh, okay, I will be very short. Just for example, how to manage the uh, the waste um, the, the waste management into the um, industrial park in order to get industri uh, industrial symbiosis should be managed well because we have to follow the national rules. But um, in order to promote uh, uh, industrial symbiosis, the, some rules should be changed because. Um, some benefits should be created to um, uh, help the companies to, uh, you know, the waste manage because the waste of a company should become um, raw material from another company. Here, the, re the regulations uh, are um, need to be changed because the, uh, they cannot follow the uh, national regulation for waste management. For instance, there is something to improve to make this process uh, realistic. So I, I stop here, or maybe someone uh, wants to uh, continue. Thank you, Angela. We are also facing this problem in our region, and we are trying to, to find the rules uh, specifically for this uh, to improve uh, circular economy. Please, Stelio. I know that you also deal with this uh, in our working group about circular economy. I'll open the microphone. The circular economy is very, very important. It, it, in, uh, it, it is uh, the future for us. And um, uh, we we will uh, work very very hard on um, on positioning of, of our region, and uh, I think uh, um, it is the, the point from which we move to the regional uh, to the policy of uh, uh, regional strategy of the melon plan. Um, so, okay. thank you, Stelio. I'm so I I think that we can. Oh, Luigi, if you want to say something more about the, your provocations. Oh, it's. Uh, um... I see that uh, we agree on what uh, what we, we what we observe mainly, uh, but uh, you, you said something very important that uh, usually we think something but we don't do directly that. So we have to uh, rebuild a sort of new coherency uh, um, uh, between what we think and what we do. But I am very optimistic because uh, uh, looking at the new generation, I see that something can change. But if we look at the humanities, you know, you, you, the, the human people probably are circular by definition if we look at our life. So we have to translate some uh, circular stuff of our life to our behavior. And we can do that because I repeat, something is changing. And also our son, probably our uh, guys uh, are looking at the future in a better way because uh, this new concept because uh, in my i remember when i was young uh, the the imperative were you have to be uh, you have to gain success uh, you have to gain a nice position in uh, the society and uh, and so on but now the pushing is a little bit different okay now probably the uh, the, the guys know that uh, uh, the, the the importance of the future is uh, uh, is, uh, is uh, as a priority a priority yeah. respect to the, the singular one. This is very important because it's the concept of society. The the um, uh, the future of society is uh, precede the the future of uh, everybody. So this is the message that we can do. If we look together to sustainability, probably we can do that. Okay. Anybody? Okay, I agree with you. And I would like this project to be a laboratory 
where da. what we want, what we think becomes uh, what we do concretely at a, okay. at a common, at a concrete level. So this, uh, I think it could be the message of our, our panel today and of the project. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.